Four critical commitments that basically addresses every aspect of our lives. If you if you travel around Monrovia, in the, in the counties, you realize our access to water supply and sanitation is quite dear. The need for government to come in and, and sort of rescue the situation is very critical. There are critical instances and reports of diarrhea bone diseases. Um, taking over the lives of many young children. Key statistics have indicated that every 20 seconds a child dies because of all of the illnesses. If one were to do that multiplication effect, to a large extent, Liberia as a sub-Saharan country uh, is no exception to the burden of uh, waterborne illnesses. <laughs> President of Liberia was prevent, presented a, a draft copy of the compact and then later on she finally signed it. That compact is basically based on water, uh, hygiene, and sanitation. Uh, by pronouncing those words, it actually brings us to the issue why it's important to be able to have 
a document that has a high political endorsement. I think this compact then uh, will prove to have been a worthy instrument and will all be very proud maybe a few years from now. And as a result of this, the result of your deliberations, a serious uh, situation regarding water sanitation will be much better improved. Thank you. Coordinating the interventions by five international NGOs, including ACF, Concern, Solidarity, Tearfund, and Oxfam. And we are currently working in 10 counties in Liberia. We have played a significant role in collaborating and cooperating with diverse WASH players, WASH actors, line ministries, other international and local NGOs and civil society organizations. And we have advocated for a lot of things in this country. Uh, most recently, we participated in all the processes which led to the joint mission, which ultimately produced the WASH Compact, which the President of Liberia, Madam Ellen Johnson Sirleaf has just signed this year. We are committed to help publicize or popularize the compact and we are doing everything within our own limited resources to address areas like institutional strengthening and capacity building, also to ensure equity and prioritize service provision to all sectors of civil society, men, women, and the challenge, physically and mentally challenged. We also believe that in order to carry on an efficient and effective intervention program, we need the appropriate financing and support. And we also need a very standardized and simple user-friendly monitoring and evaluation process going on. We then went on to, to Washington DC to be able to also highlight those commitments uh, in the high level meeting that is also intended for ministers of finance and water sector ministers. And again, Labrador was showcased there as having achieved a very major uh, milestone in our drive to be able to coordinate the sector activities. So the compact again was, was, was highlighted there, and besides the compact, another issue that came up uh, was the issue of information sharing. And Liberia has, uh, in that respect, been able to do what we call a water point mapping. So we have a rough idea of how many wells are in this country. We are now going to put up a mechanism where we can be able to monitor the functionality of those systems and those that are being put online. Some of the key areas of consensus, or at least commonality, have been the commitment to prioritize at the highest level the WASH intervention. This is a major achievement. The highest level of both governments have been able to achieve the objective of ensuring that we have been prioritized politically. We've extended beyond that to even commit resources or at least the possibility of ensuring that resources be committed from our own budget to this very important sector, which is very important. The figures are staggering for Liberia. Access to water is low, but access to sanitation is worse and far lower. And therefore, as Oxfam and as the Watch Consortium, we are involved in trying to make the compact a reality in this country so that people far and wide, Liberians far and wide, within this country would have access to improved sanitation so that they can live in dignified sanitation conditions, they can have improved access in their lives to water, and they, they can live dignified lives as befits country, uh, citizens of this country. I believe that the compact sets out a very clear target for both the government and the people of Liberia in how to meet the Millennium Development Goals target for water and sanitation uh, in this country. Uh, the, the role that uh, international 
NGOs and of course local civil society have played in uh, development of the in the development of the compact is not one that can be that can be uh, viewed as light. sources of water first of all are not really safe. Recent water quality testing in Morovia indicated a high percentage of E. coli infestation in water plants. What that means is that I sit down in Mamba Point and pay thirty dollars for a jerry can of water, and I don't even know where the water comes from. If we were to make such a report available, you know, to most of most of the individuals who are buying water, I think people will check two or three times before they start to pay for what I might want to call their own death. Water is life, and water will also mean death if it is dirty, if it is not clean, and if it is chemically and biologically not fit to enter the body. And my comment to that would be that if some of the issues in the compact are highlighted and implemented, those issues can be addressed. It all points toward the strategic objective two of the WASH Compact. The compact has really brought to life the sector. Prior to the development of the Liberia WASH Compact, our planning was fragmented, policies were not being implemented, there was a lot of documentation that had been developed but there was very little action to be seen. In essence, a compact is a commitment to action within deadlines and within a specific timeline by all different stakeholders. Our Liberia WASH Compact, which was signed off at the very highest level by Ellen Johnson Sirleaf, President of Liberia, and also a Goodwill Ambassador for Sanitation and Water in all of Africa. By the way, this is the first time that a Head of State has put such force and such commitment behind the WASH sector, and we are very grateful. Importantly, is that water, hygiene and sanitation is key, especially for women, because women are the caregivers they are the service providers within our homes and by and large they are also breadwinners in very many parts of this country, Liberia. We realize that many women in this country are either small scale farmers or market women or any other business persons in a small way. And their work or the work that they do in this country really contributes to the growth and development of the country. Without water, our farmer women in the southeast cannot farm. Without water, then sanitation issues are at risk. And therefore, most of our women have to spend time trying to get medication, trying to get good health for their children. Forward, we are hoping that the awareness uh, that is being done for the compact will provide citizens, first of all, with the understanding of what the government of Liberia is doing about ensuring that they have access to safe water and improved sanitation services. Secondly, to provide citizens with the capacity to demand accountability from their governments and understand what their responsibilities are. Because uh, as much as water and sanitation are human rights, citizens also have a responsibility to ensure that they support government efforts to deliver on this promise. Thirdly, it would also provide government the opportunity of uh, uh, getting a clear feedback mechanism from the citizens as to how they want the compact delivered and what it means to them to turn this compact into realistic uh, plans and programs that will ensure that citizens are happy with their governments. It is led by a National Water Resources and Sanitation Board, which is the overall umbrella leadership for the sector. That board is yet to be constituted and we believe that that is going to happen as soon as the Minister of Public Works calls the first board meeting at the President's endorsement. Underneath that board there are two technical arms. There is the National Water Sanitation and Hygiene Promotion Committee which is responsible for coordination, for strategy, for policy development, basically for the, being the technical arm, the operational arm of the sector. Then you have the Water Supply and Sanitation Commission, which is the regulatory body for the sector. These two entities together enable the board to be able to lead, make decisions and take questions to legislation uh, for ratification. We've really moved forward and we really hope to see the board and the commission up and running by the end of the year. NGOs and especially as WASH Consortium, we would want to bring the main details of this providing the services to the various communities who want to make this a reality. It is a big challenge. We know it is daunting. 
in places like West Point, and most of the urban slums in this country, Clara Town, Crew Town, all those places. It is daunting, it is a big challenge, but we know that with determination, we can lead on this crusade and we can have this change happen in most of these communities. I would like to also consider the issue of uh, the environment vis-à-vis -vis water and sanitation. Well, we have a situation where, for example, in this footage, you get to see the source of the drinking water is seated right where the sewage is rolling. So it's basically the sewage runs into the well and people get to, 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 to draw water out of this. No one needs to, to perform any experiment here to tell you that what they are getting there is water that is infested with a whole lot of bacteria and they get to drink it. One other critical issue I would like to highlight, consider the issue of West Point. Open defecation is happening even in the urban areas and to a very large extent. It's, it's serious and we need to start to think about how to deal with this. I think in terms of threat to to, 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 to continuity of life. Particular environments in this, in this city uh, need to be highlighted. I still think that there are issues that we need to highlight as we go about discussing the Labrador Watch Compact. It is still important to note at this stage that child mortality is still on the rise, no matter how we feel about it, due to the fact that inability for people to access water at the safest distance possible. I would like you to imagine, for instance, children plying the streets, uh, crossing the roads, and, 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 and being faced with the risks of motorist uh, vehicles. Uh, imagine this, for example, a little child has to go through the hurdles of watching out for traffic, uh, uh, issues of, of, of vehicle plying the streets heavily, and he has a bucket of water on his head. That, that for me, is, is a serious hazard to to the child's survival. What happens if the child gets knocked, knocked down, for instance? Let us also not forget that children are also very key in the business of water, hygiene, and sanitation. As we have seen in our country again, there are very many issues that we still do not have right in place or infrastructure. For example, piped water. So we have to have children moving into very many or far places to get water. So it is important for everyone to use water well because it is a scarce commodity. Without proper water, our children are not able to go to school. Our children are not in a position to use their time well in other constructive issues because they have to spend time to walk long distances to find water. And therefore, then again, it is our responsibility as communities to take in very strongly the role that water hygiene and sanitation does in our livelihoods. And one thing for sure is that we are all, all human beings, and all human beings are equal, and all human beings have a right. Let's make access to water, hygiene, and sanitation a right to everyone. And most importantly, let's remind ourselves that the women who strive to take care of us, the women who strive to ensure that we eat in our households, have a right to get access, or also have a right to find it easy for them to help our lives to be good. That woman is your mother, that woman is your sister, that woman is your grandmother or your wife. So let us try and make life as easy as possible for them. And as the saying goes, a happy mother is a happy home. If a mother is not happy, the home will be in distress. But as we discuss the issue of water sanitation,